Right. You really have to believe in your product. You really have to test your product and know that it will sell. Yeah. If you go to a like a smaller retailer that's just a one-off, if it, they'll just let it sit on the shelf till it all sells out and they want more. But if you go to a supermarket and it doesn't sell, they'll delist you. And oh. then, they, then they will buy. Then they won't buy again. Well, Harv, thank you. Thank you oh, for all pleasure. your help. Thank that you for so coming. <laughs> Building cardboard stools. Building cardboard stools. You know, does it remind you of when we used to build stuff for um, in the office when we would like jerry rig? <laughs> <laughs> the yes. I remember we would have like, I would have all sorts of hardware that we would need to. Yes, we, we were always putting pieces together for yeah. different things. Yeah. And that was, but it's hard to believe that's over 20 years ago. Oh, God. Now you're dating me. 20 years. Oh, Dang. seriously. Well, cheers. Here's cheers. to that's new cool. entrepreneurship uh, and, adventures. And, and that's what it is. It's about having fun. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is Harv Tannenbaum, guys. Hello, everybody. He is the uh, founder, entrepreneur, inventor of Tannenbaum's Hot Sauce this bad boy we're gonna be um drinking eating <laughs> drinking tea. drinking tea. today drinking tea Are, do you know the difference between artisanal and uh like like you make artisanal hot sauces so yes. what so, do... so we we call them botanical hot sauces oh botanical but th they are artisanal because they're very highly crafted right um so one of the things that's really different about ours is fruit is the base ingredient of the hot sauce so there's other blueberry hot sauces out there but it's a blueberry flavoring it's a blueberry additive right ours is blueberry is the actual base of the hot sauce oh really so, so the base have, is not hot peppers well it yes. is but it's more like equal ratios like less right. flavoring right so typically hot sauce I mean, is it is a vinegar as a preservative, carrots or or a tomato base, mm -hmm. and then you have the peppers. Right. So I mean, the peppers are kind of, but we use actual whole fruit as the base ingredient, cool. as opposed to the carrots or the the, the tomato paste. Right. Right. And so it gives it a, a couple of different characteristics, which are kind of cool. Right. Well, I was thinking about that. You know, you have a very artistic. Thank you. That's because I had nothing to do with the labels. <laughs> we uh, um, we sent them out to uh, 99 Design. So Show this, me each one. So this is the pineapple, rosemary, turmeric. Okay. So these are all combinations of fruit and herbs and spices that match the fruit, both for flavor and for health benefits. Very cool. Um, this is the blueberry Ooh. with sumac and cinnamon sumac when we went to have this approved by the ohio department of agriculture they said sumac we don't have that on our list that's poison sumac and right. we had to tell them no no it's it's used a lot in indian food it has a lemon flavor oh okay so they, that's they what i was thinking it. too was was poison sumac so this but it's not it's not poisonous is, guys no no we try not to poison the consumers <laughs> it's not good for repeat business um this is red pepper with lemon peel and smoked paprika. And uh, this is probably the closest to a traditional hot sauce. Yeah. Just because of the red pepper flavor gives us uh, that consistency. And this is one of the Ooh, first ones we made. Let me zoom in. Strawberry, mint, and basil. Oh, strawberry, mint, and basil. Yes. I can't wait to try that one. That sounds mm. like um, almost like a little Italian, you know? Mm like or mediterranean this well what we're going to do with this one is we're going to uh this is going to become a seasonal we're only going to bring this out in the spring okay so because of the of the fruit bases i can make this hot sauce with any fruit match it with and so i've got like five other hot sauces that i'm ready to bring out as soon as i can yeah do it um, fantastic and actually my favorite is an apricot base and oh we we haven't made that one yet Ooh. Dried Thank apricots you. or fresh no, whole apricots? Fruit. Start off with whole fruit. Whole fruit. Yes. I love it. I love it. Okay. Before we do one of mine, I want to do a different one. Okay. Okay. So this is. I know this is weird, guys. I know that the artist appeals is normally about 
an artist, normally a visual artist, although we do 3D artists too, but I figure why not do a food artist? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's the entrepreneurial journey. We we're talking about that upstairs about how you got to be a little bit crazy to be an artist or an entrepreneur because it takes it takes optimism. It takes persistence, right? What did, what did you say? You said it takes... Um, uh, it takes a lot of guts is what it takes. takes a lot of guts, yeah. So this is is a, a, one of the Fuegos, actually. A Fuego Spice Ooh. Company. And it's a organic habanero-based sauce. Okay. And according to the label, this is what a habanero <laughs> sauce should taste like. Okay. So they're not. Oh, it's got some kick to it. I it's like got it. Some kick. It's not super hot, mm. but you notice it's got a carrot base to it. Oh yeah. So it's got that that, that vegetable. Yeah, flavor. and it does have an orange coloring too. Yes, but the reason I wanted to taste this one first was to notice that with this hot sauce, um, you're going to get about a quarter second delay from the time you taste the carrot until you taste the hot until you get the heat. Okay. And, and that's, that's not really of, like painful hot. I mean, no. I feel it in my mouth, but you know, it's not painful. It's, it's like a good all kind of over hot. Okay. Now, mind you guys, I like hot. I'm part Cajun, half Cajun. Mm -hmm. So I love me some hot sauce, but some of those ones out there that like burn your lips yes. and they have like all those oils. And we need to talk about that because that is the big myth with a lot of hot sauce. You yeah. see a lot of commercials for ghost pepper and how hot can you take it and the right. one chip challenge. And they make it sound like the heat is all about how much heat you can take. Yeah. And it's not. Heat is there. It's to enhance the flavor of the food. Is right. What is there. Right. Well, it, and so the heat is a byproduct. It's a good byproduct. But the trick is not to make it so hot that you can't taste anything. Right, right. Okay. Definitely, so, definitely. So this is the strawberry basil mint. Okay, strawberry basil mint. Yes. Hey, Harv, how did you come up with the idea of starting an artisanal hot sauce company? Do tell. Uh, well. Tell us about your journey, your story. <laughs> let's taste this one first. We'll oh, okay. 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 Should so I this is, spoons? Uh, same, same spoon. This is good. I should pour it in the right hand so I don't pour it all over the floor. Mm, it's in the craft room. It's okay. Oh, you gave me a good dollop. Yeah. Look so at that, guys. Got a dollop. So what you're going to notice with this one, though, it is very strawberry. And it's also going to take about three seconds before you get the heat. Okay. Oh, it's very strawberry. Mm. And now when you do get the heat, it's a slower burn and it's more to the back of your tongue. It's definitely the kick is there, yeah. but it is not a kick you in the face heat. It is a warm you up heat. Yeah. My whole mouth is warm, mm -hmm. but it's not like, oh, oh, oh. if you don't like heat, you probably wouldn't like this, but it is fantastic. Yes. Oh, I love that. Mm. Well, thank you. I so, love that. Where so, would you put that on? Um, so we actually use all of them for everything because of the whole fruit enzyme. You can mix it with anything in the fruit enzyme blends into the food. So uh, glazed chicken, Ooh, glazed yeah. fish, mm -hmm. bake with this. If you make a, a chocolate cake or brownies, take out a little bit of the liquid and replace it with strawberry hot sauce. Brownies? I put it in, if I, I, in hamburgers to just take raw meat, raw ground meat, throw <laughs> some of this in there, just make a hamburger, and it's not a strawberry hamburger. <laughs> because... Okay, yeah, you're leaving that with me, right? <laughs> I will leave that with you. Yes. <laughs> that is so but, good. Yes. And so even when you put it on the brown, you put it in the brownie and bake it, you get, it's brownie. And you say, there's no hot sauce in there. And you take a second bite of brownie, and then you can notice the warmth in the back end. So when you make a meal with this, so for example, one of the things we'll do is make a salad. Take a chicken breast, just, you know, bite-sized pieces, mm -hmm. saute it in the frying pan. In the last minute, I'll dump some of this on there, glaze the pan, coat the chicken, throw it mm. in the salad. You have the salad with all this elevated flavor, but it doesn't taste like a salad to which you've added hot sauce. Oh, that's fantastic. But at I the end of the that. meal, you still get that, that back end lick your lip warmth. Mm. And, you know, I'm having a cup of tea, so we're, we're having tea. Cheers. Tea, cheers. Um, and, you know, I waited, and it wasn't like 
it wasn't overwhelming and right. it's it's nice it it fades slowly mm -hmm. it's good that is really good so the the, the real back end story for all of this was yeah. uh a friend of my daughter's when they lived up in Vermont lived yeah. up in Connecticut okay uh every year would grow jalapenos and then make jalapeno jelly and give it away as Christmas gift. Mm, yum. So one year they the greenhouse messed up her order and sent her habaneros instead of jalapenos, which are considerably hotter. Okay. And they anyway, but she made the made the jelly the same way. Right. And half of her people that she gave it to said, Don't ever do that again. <laughs> and the other half said, I will pay you to make more. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Um, anyway, so uh, somebody gave so, me a bunch of habaneros. One so day. did you get one of these jars? I got one of these jars. Okay. Because it was too hot for my daughter. And I guess you were one of the ones that said more. I want more. more. I, I want more. <laughs> and she wouldn't make more. Oh, no. So I decided, and, and I like pepper jelly. I've always liked pepper jelly, but it's not that hot. Yeah. So I wanted, I thought this would be great on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So I'm going to make, and, and I'm a you, you know my story about being a recovering librarian. And so. Wait, 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 no, tell it again. I'm, I'm a recovering librarian. <laughs> and so librarians believe that we can look up anything. Yeah. And having never made jelly before, right. I decided I'm going to take these habaneros and figure out how to make jelly. Yeah. And so I read this recipe and I didn't like the idea of the tomato paste and I didn't like the idea of something else. So I thought, I'll try, I'll just use fruit instead. So went to the, got some strawberries, threw all the stuff in the, you know, I mean, didn't follow the, I got to put something else in it. So we put some mint in it mm -hmm. and I was making all these, I made so strawberry it was like jelly. Strawberry, mint, habanero? And vinegar, and apple cider vinegar. And apple cider vinegar. Right. Mm. Okay. So then I thought, well, if I could do strawberries, I bet I could do apricots. Yeah. So then it was became a game of what fruit I could use. Okay. So which depending whatever I found in the store. And I would take it to work and give it away. Yeah. And people said you need to sell it, sell it, sell it. Yeah. I'm never gonna do it. Never gonna happen. <laughs> I'm not going to the farmer's market. I'm not living in my kitchen <laughs> making this stuff. So after about five years of being pestered, I went to a uh actually an actual real product development consultant. And well, you tested first. I mean, well, I think that's great advice that you just gave is that you you iterated, you tested, well, you you made it for the love right. of it, and then you kept experimenting, but then you went to a product developer. So tell me about Correct. that adventure. So uh my 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 product developer lives in Cincinnati. Okay. And I I called her, traded some emails, and sent her some samples. Yeah. And she said, you know, I'm not really a jelly person, but I will try it. <laughs> so she calls me back a week later and said, you really need to sell this stuff. <laughs> and I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, you can't really do that because what you do in the kitchen, which and I don't want to live in my kitchen doing that, no. is not what you do in a factory. Okay. And so we need to, if we are going to do this, uh, the next step would be we need to really fix the formula and decide okay. what, how you would make it so that you make it something scalable and making something consistent because obviously in the kitchen it's it's very variable right right um, so it was still kind of a jelly though at that point so it was a jelly at that point and okay. then we decided to make it a hot sauce because we were afraid that it, it's kind of a, a new category it's not it it, it's not a standard no. hot sauce no no it's, it's but if you, not standard but if you, it's it's amazing and most people cook with it whether they glaze something just throw it into chili or whatever yeah and so, but we didn't want to call it a cooking sauce either, because then people, then you think of it as a, a, a single recipe item. Right. I need, for this recipe, I need a cooking sauce. So we decided to call it a hot sauce because hot sauce people will try anything. Oh, that's a new hot sauce. I want it. I haven't had that one yet. I'll yeah. try it. Yeah, we went to a party just a couple of weeks ago. A friend of mine got married and her husband literally has an entire cabinet of hot sauces. I mean, literally right. a kitchen, a 36 inch kitchen cabinet. He must have 150 different hot sauces. He collects them. It's crazy. I didn't know people with hot sauces were like collectors. There's a lot of hot sauce out there. Yeah. And so I, I, you break it down into kind of three broad categories. Yeah. One of them is you've got the people who 
they just they want the super huts. Yeah. They don't care how hot it is. I want more right. of that. <laughs> no, we have to try something else first. Oh. Okay. okay. So that was the strawberry. Let's try the blueberry. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But no, no. You're talking. I'm like, I want more. The strawberry is so good, guys. So I love that you you tested, you got feedback. You know, and you can use this in any entrepreneurial situation. You can use this in any sort of art or design, right? Correct. Um, you know, I was listening to Josie Lewis, who was on the podcast in season, oh, I forget what season she was on, but she's doing like artist advice now. Right. And she was talking about scaling up the visual arts. So like, how do you find a thing you can do? over and over and over again and how do you kind of systematize that how do you like you know what i mean like she's a visual artist she's a painter so she had to find a way to recreate work that would sell and make enough of it to make money right right and Cheers. same thing with uh hot sauce this is the blueberry same profile not as far as wait very blueberry very blueberry and then about three, four, five seconds into it, there's the heat on the back end. I would say this is not nearly as hot as the strawberry. And they all have the same amount of habanero in them. Really? Yes. It just depends on your taste buds. That is a very light hot to me. Yep. I I, I've had people nice. tell me the pineapple is the hottest. I've also had people tell me that uh, the pineapple has no heat. Mm -hmm. So I had Interesting. Those. But what you were saying about the artwork and, yeah. and the entrepreneurship is, is very interesting, too, because... Our labels went through a couple of iterations to get here. Yeah. And from an entrepreneurial point of view, and this being a kind of different category, is 99% of the people who will ever buy this hot sauce have no idea who I am, have no idea what the background is, have no idea what the backstory is yeah. or what this is. They're going to have to look at this and say, this is something I want to try. Yeah. And so that's why we went through all those iterations. Yeah. But we're trying to tell the whole story on the label. Hold that up. So see. if I hold that up, so if you'll notice, you know, we thought a long a long time about notice the pineapple. Yeah. You can look at and these are the habaneros. Oh, I see them. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful artwork. Right. Are they watercolors? Yeah. It's What's this this one has this is the uh, red pepper. So you can see the red bell peppers. Yeah. Same thing in the habaneros. Mm -hmm. Um we had another iteration of these that had the spices on it but it was too cluttered mm. so you're back to the same thing on the one hand you're trying to tell the whole story right on the other hand if you clutter it up then people can't see this um yeah. and anyway so that's packaging design is really important yes. we had a packaging designer on or a gentleman that was artist he was he was a fine artist now in his retirement and he was a packaging designer for his like career right. and um and I know that I've discovered with iConnect Crafts the importance of packaging. It's such a, um, it's such a, oh, uh, it's it's a new product like you're talking right. about, right? It's it's a thing that is movable, um, and if you don't have that packaging just right, so that people understand what they're getting, then they won't pick it up. They won't Correct. buy it. Absolutely. So you the, the package has to tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even in fine art, you still have to have some sort of packaging. Like you have to have bubble wrap and corners to protect your frame. But in a gallery or in a sales situation, you need to convey why somebody should buy that piece of art, that design, that whatever over something else. So it's applicable to entrepreneurship, artwork, anywhere. OK, what are we trying now? This one's not yours, right? This was not mine. Oh, this is, what do we got? So this is called Bliss. Bliss. What's really interesting about this hot sauce, I think there's two things. One of them is the peppers in here were aged in barrels that had previously aged maple syrup, which had previously aged beer, which had previously aged bourbon. And Okay. And despite all of that, I think it's got a lot of flavor but it's not overly hot and it's not special to me yeah no it's i mean it's this very is just vinegar like based yeah it's a vinegar based louisiana it's like a louisiana style hot sauce 
but it's got a little more complexity. It does remind me of Crystal. Yes. We were up in my refrigerator looking at my hot sauce collection, and I'm a Crystal girl because that's what they have on the tables. Right. In all the, you know, country restaurants in Louisiana, they have Crystal just sitting out, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what you put on your shrimp and your, your everything, you know, your jambalaya or your gumbo or, or whatever, your crawfish or whatever. But yeah, that is really good, but it's very typical. Right. It is very typical. So it's a, a Louisiana-style so Louisiana hot sauces are cayenne pepper and vinegar. Okay. And um, and that's whether it's xanthan gum or, you know, with a little thickener, but that's really the base of it. What is xanthan gum? Ugh. Xanthan gum is a thickener. Okay. So you notice these are, this was very watery. I mean, yeah, typical, yeah. You know, where mine are a lot thicker. Yeah, well, the um, fruit base gives them a thicker, right? Mm, Got to add some pectin. Okay, okay. So uh, pectin is a natural product really made out of apples. Right. And it's, it's a thickener. Oh, I and, didn't know that. Pectin is made out of apples? Yeah. I um, thought, like, pectin was made out of, like, horses' hooves. Is that the, is gelatin. That the urban myth? No, that's gelatin. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Pectin is the natural product. Is uh, Apples have a lot of pectin in them. So that's where a lot of pectin comes from. But xanthan gum is a, when you get a vegetable that starts to rot and gets that slime on it, Ugh, that's yeah. the, that is xanthan gum. Oh, and that's what, <laughs> so I should be keeping that? <laughs> well, but every, I look on any label of salad dressing, yeah. it's got xanthan gum in it as a thickener. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So this is the, this is my pineapple. Oh, pineapple. Yeah. Pineapple. I love so, pineapple salsas, like, um, like a pineapple pico de gallo. Okay. Okay, so we've kind of talked about your invention of okay. this hot sauce, this artisanal hot sauce. And I do try and keep the podcast in this format right. where we talk about our okay. product. So you went to a product developer. How did you find her? And then you guys a, standardize this this formula. Cheers. So this cheers, is a pineapple. Cheers. And again, you're going to notice the same flavor profile of mm -hmm. Oh, it's all fruit. Oh, mm, that is so three good. Three seconds into it, you get that that back end heat. Oh, I like that. And and you, mm. now this will build throughout the meal, so it even's got a little <laughs> bit of heat now. By the end of the meal, you get that really nice build up warmth. Right. Yeah, so you're back to playing with it. I mean, I really. Oh, let's try this spice combination. Let's right. try this fruit. Uh, wait a minute, that didn't work. That fruit didn't work with that spice, but I like the idea of that spice. What fruit would go with that spice? Okay. Um, let's try a little more fruit. Let's try a little less fruit. Let's try right. a little less thickener. And um, you just keep um, playing with it until you really like it. So um, I, I did some research and I found mm -hmm. so a couple of product development specialists. I wrote them all emails. Uh, some of them got back to me, some of them didn't. And so you just did a Google search, yeah, product development, development specialist. specialist. Right. There you go, guys. In quotes, product development specialist. So this is a whole, like, industry? It is. It is. I mean, actually, uh, like a lot of the big companies, like the food company, like Procter & Gamble and, yeah. and all. I mean, they keep them on staff. They have them on staff all the time. Oh, fantastic. To do that. Um, anyway, so I found an independent consultant. Mm -hmm. and And she tried it, and she liked it, and we talked about if we take it, if we do the next step, if we go to fix the formula, are we going to make it a hot sauce? Are we going to make it a, because the, the jelly market is a little more stagnant. People think of jelly for kids, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Right. Which there would be a great big surprise if a child bite, bit into that. <laughs> <laughs> which you don't Ooh, want to, yeah. Although I do know a seven-year-old that uses this for pancake syrup. Really? Yes. The blueberry. The blueberry. Yes. Okay. And so, um. And we played with it. I mean, that's I have really another one of the pineapple while, yes. we're, while we're doing pineapple. It's so good. It's so good. It is so good. You don't need oh. anything. We were raiding my fridge for crackers, and I thought maybe we'd eat chicken or something. No, right. don't need well, it. And, and you're back to hot sauce mm. does not have to be excruciatingly so hot. So good. It's you. It's more about getting the flavor out of it. Mm. So good. The heat enhances the flavor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... So our, our daughter, Laura, took the red pepper and made a pot roast, and this was the only spice she used. Oh, I know. It was great. Good. Um, so we made it, and we spent about a year playing with it in the, in the, in the commercial kitchen and then selling it to 
small specialty stores. Okay, so you were doing- and we did that for an entire year. Same thing, getting, making. So one of the things that annoys me about Shark Tank is when you watch it, and they always say, it just goes to prove that anybody can do it. And anybody can't do it. It takes a lot of patience. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you've got, and it also, the other thing they also say is um, you need to build demand before you commit a lot of money to the product. Mm. And in one sense, that's true. But in another sense, how can you build demand unless you have a product to sell? Yeah. So you, you're, it's that balance in the middle. It's of, a catch 22. Yeah. Of, of trying to get it out there. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's been, it, but it's fun. It's so so fun. from start to, from, you know, from inventing this just in your kitchen to having, so we talked about art. You yeah. you made this artisanal thing. Then we talked about products. Right. So you found a product developer who helped you a little bit. Then we talked about presentation, which is the packaging. Your packaging is awesome. Mm. Um, and then we talk about educate. So it's actually what you're talking about, educating your audience. Right. It's a natural transition. Like it's a catch-22. How do you? So the nice, so we did a lot of um, small specialty stores. Okay. Like a and Treasure in Gettysburg, Holobus Farm Market down in Biglerville. And you we just walked in, walked in and, you know, asked them to, to, if they'd like to be interested in carrying it. And then we would go in and do tastings. Okay. For them. So uh, we'd, we'd bring, we'd go in and we would make it the brownies and we'd just offer it on a spoon. And uh, so like uh, Holobaz did a, their strawberry festival when strawberries come out. Okay. Because we have a lot of fruit farms in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you do, and so they have some entertainment and they have some vendors come in and we come in and, Hey, you want to try some hot sauce? And we we have about ten different stores that we do that too, and that and we get that gives us feedback. Yeah, to know, and that is one of the most important things we've gotten from the feedback is as much as you see commercials for super hot stuff, the people who are buying our hot sauce really appreciate the fact that it's not overly hot. Yeah, that this is not that they're they're going to still do this the really hot stuff once in a while just because they want to. Put it on every day, mm -hmm. put it on anything, not worry about it. Hot enough, you get heat, not hot, that, so hot that it ruins the meal. These are great. Yeah. The foodies like it because instead of having to toast all your spices and mix this and put this in on this order, just throw some of that in. Yeah. And it handles all of that. Yeah, it is. It's really a great combination. And you were telling me about, you know, you said you were a recovering librarian. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love that. You also mentioned the, Flavor Bible? Oh, it's, it's a book okay. I found. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's a book I found that has, it just matches all the flavors. So you look up apricot and it says, here's, you know, all these spices that could go with apricot. Very cool. So um takes some of the guesswork out, mm -hmm. but uh, not all of it because it still comes back to uh, the combinations. Right. So well, it's still a matter of experimenting. And it's still experimenting and, and you still want to get the texture right and you still want to make sure it's consistent. And, right, right. And um, again, you have to like it. You have to like what you're doing. You have to be enthusiastic about it. And, <laughs> you know, Harv, you don't lack for enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Amplify, how do you get bigger then? So you tested it, you take okay. it around. So now we went to, uh, we joined the Specialty Foods Association. Oh, and okay. we went to the specialty food show in New York, okay, which is not open to the public. It is a buyers only. Yeah, show. it's a B two B. Yes, B two B, and uh, we got a lot of good contacts there. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are still working, but they take a long time to work out. Yeah. So, for example, one of the distributors we're talking to wants to get us into a supermarket, mm -hmm. but the supermarket's hot sauce committee does not meet until January, <laughs> so we can't go talk to them until January about this product. It sounds silly, but on the other hand, when you think of the logistics of delivering, you know, we're putting the same hot sauce in 200 stores, the logistics of ordering, you know, we need all the time, the, the ahead of time to order, they need the ahead of the time to figure out the logistics where it's going to be delivered. Right. Um, we're working right now on getting up on Amazon. Mm. That is oh. a pain in the neck. I had to hire another consultant to help me with that. Mm. Um, I'm on ABC 27, Good Day PA. I've been on that once a month for the past couple of months. We do a little cookie spot. Um, I was invited to uh, Taste of Philadelphia Ooh. October 
21st mm -hmm. um, at the uh, casino. Right. Um, at the Valley Forge Casino. It's a some kind of premiere event where it's done it's actually on a Friday night and Saturday. Uh -huh. uh, so apparently for this type of event, that's all the uh, all the chefs, all the uh, celebrities go to that because they're all looking for new things. Oh, so we yeah, got to put in their menus. Yes. So we were invited to that. So we'll be at that show. And then that, done, how did you get hooked into that? Just somebody part of that part of that building process. So when you're on TV, you never know who sees you. Right. Um, if you go to a festival, um, so we just did Brute Fest, uh, since Tober Fest that the mm -hmm. um, senators did uh, last weekend. Yeah. And somebody, you, you never know who walks up in there and likes it and what their connection is. Right. But uh, yeah, so we got invited to that. So do you um, have criteria for how you pick your conferences and the events you're going to do? Uh, like, you know, I always think it's important because you can go broke doing right. conferences and events and stuff like that because they can be very expensive and yes. they're a lot of work. I yes. just did Capona um, a month ago or something, and it was three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. By Monday, it rained. <laughs> there was a good. river flowing through my tent. Let me tell you, water does not go good with cardboard. No, it does not. <laughs> so, you know, it was... Saturday and Sunday were great, but Monday was a wash. Bad pun. Yeah. <laughs> a wash. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it costs a lot to rent the space, and you got to buy a booth, and you got to mm -hmm. have a setup, and you got to have a display. So, how do you I, pick your conferences? And I think the, the big key is knowing your audience, is who you're trying to reach. So, in the beginning, you're just happy that somebody wants to buy your product. Yeah. And as you start getting a little bigger, uh, you have to refine, you know, you refine that to, you know, who's really buying it and what's really might worth my time. Now, on the hot sauce side of it, it's a little easier because, so if we do a tasting in um, like Hall of Oz mm -hmm. down in um, uh, uh, Biggleville, you know, people that are coming to that are not coming to taste hot sauce. They're right. just regular, or when uh, Leg Up Farmer's Market in, in York. Right. Uh, they're just looking for groceries. Right. So you're it's hit and miss. Right. But the hot but you can go to a hot sauce festival and people are looking for hot sauce. Right. So you're getting that type of thing. And now we've gotten to the point where we're doing things like the taste of, of Philadelphia and the taste of Lancaster, because these are not the cheapest hot sauces out there. No. Um, there are there are artisanal hot sauces. Uh, there's a lot of craft that goes into those. Yeah. The ingredients are expensive. Yeah. It's not easy to make. Uh, and so anybody going to a store and buying, uh, for, uh, I don't want to mention any brand names, but, you know, the cheapest hot sauce or the standard hot sauce on the shelf is not looking to this. No. If you're looking at us, you're looking at quality, taste, specialty, you know, that that uh, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's you got what you pay for. Yeah, I gotta have more of the strawberry. So, um, so you kind of start small, right? And then you, um, you get bigger. You and yeah, you kind of refine and look for yes. your target market. It's that back and forth. I mean, you've got to invest some in in producing the product and showing people what you do. Mm -hmm. Got to get it out there, you know. And then you refine your audience as to who you're who you're marketing to. That is so good, Art. It so really is. You will be sitting there eating hot sauce <laughs> off a spoon. I got myself a whole little row of spoons back here. <laughs> so this one is a actually a very highly crafted hot sauce made up in New York. Okay. Um, and it's it's very different, but it's like one of those things where again you can tell it's crafted, but um, but it's more of a hot sauce rather than a yeah. fruit sauce or a, yes or a hot fruit sauce. Right. Maybe you should call it a hot fruit sauce. We actually thought about that. No way. Yes. <laughs> Great minds take like. And so we cheers. Up, this one is this. Oh, so yes, this is actually a really not hot sauce. This is horseshoe brand maple cayenne hot sauce. Mm. Maple oh, cayenne. All right. Yes. Oh, very barbecuey. Mm -hmm. This we could go on barbecue. Yep. It almost tastes like a barbecue sauce. It does. It really does. It's, it's that would be though. really good on ribs, but I wouldn't use it on chicken. I wouldn't use no. it on chicken, but it's not, it's not, as, it's not quite as versatile. Kind of smoky. As ours. 
smoky. Yes. Ooh, I'm starting to get the sniffles. <laughs> Ooh. So Ooh. one of the when when we started making hot sauce. So first you go to the you know your kitchen, then a commercial kitchen, and then factory samples. Okay. So tell me about factory samples. I want to. So wanna as, a, as an entrepreneur, getting into the consumer product and the food in business is very difficult. Um, so you can't. Even in the commercial kitchen, you're, it's better than than your than a home kitchen, but it's still not the consistency of a factory. Okay. The problem, everything's a trade off. The, the problem with a factory, though, is expensive because you're not going to go into the factory and make five bottles. No. The minimum run is so with a lot of the the co packers, you know, uh, your minimum order is hundred thousand bottles. Right, right. right. I, I can't afford a hundred thousand bottles of hot sauce today. Don't... <laughs> and where are you going to put it? Right. So, and plus, they don't know who you are. You've not been in a factory before. They don't know if you're going to get repeat business. So you have to look for a co-packer that has a balance of capabilities, but not so big that they have huge minimums. And um, so, what anyway, is a co-packer? A co-packer is a factory that co is co-manufacturers. So you, they partner they have with the, the manufacturer yeah. to package. They, they have all the equipment. Okay. But, you know, you go to them with your recipe. Mm -hmm. They buy all the ingredients. They mix it. They. Oh, okay. okay. So, so it's not it's not a third party from the manufacturer, too. So in yeah. art, like in art licensing, like I just got my tunnel book over there source. Right. And we talk about MOQ or minimum order quantity. Right. And um, we're looking at a manufacturer in the so, no, yeah, co-packer is a co-manufacturer. Okay. So it's it's the same thing. I mean, if you're um if, if you were to do a piece of art, right, and then you you want a factory to do or a co-manufacturer to do, you know, five thousand prints because you're gonna that's the same thing. Okay. They're the ones that have all the equipment. Right. They don't they don't have a copyright to anything. They'll just they just have equipment to make it on. Right. And it's interesting because these manufacturers, you think that any manufacturer is going to be able to do it all, but they don't because there's very specific there's machinery, specific right? Machinery, right. So, so you've got to find a manufacturer that has the machinery to bottle or the ma machinery to print canvas or the machinery to right. um in our in the tunnel books case, you know, we've got to find somebody and that was a real challenge. Um, find somebody that can die cut. Oh, right. Can, here, I'm gonna grab this. You know what fell down was my book. Oh, that's what fell. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, what I was learning about, it's really interesting. What I was learning about um sourcing for this, it was that you know, with paints for the paints and for um the mini brads and for all the materials that you know you need you've got to have the cardboard uh kiss cut they call it for die cut i had okay. this laser cut in the us to test them first and then now we're trying to get them die cut because it's less expensive because you well it's it's expensive because you have to make the die cut but then right. once you have the die cut you can just bam, 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 right. and make a whole bunch of them. But what really makes the cost go up is the is the MOQ, the right. minimum order quantity. Sure, because it doesn't pay for them to set up the equipment. And same thing, so you need paint there. Well, it's not just any paint. You can't go down to Home Depot, no. but it's a special paint. Yeah. And then it's then you know, and then they have to buy a minimum quantity, mm -hmm. and that's only used for that. And then yeah. oh, you want another color? Well. Now we've got to clean out the machinery. We've got to. Well, and in this case, we're trying to source paint pens, like little paint yeah. palettes and pens. And, and so they come from another manufacturer and go to our manufacturer yeah. and they have to test it all oh, and yeah. make sure that it's appropriate and okay for kids. Yep. That it's safe. Cause you know, a lot of art supplies like cadmium are, are toxic. Kind of like your sumac. Yes. Don't want to guess. <laughs> yeah. So it's you... not toxic. So not poisoning us. So you go to the manufacturer. Yeah. You know, and you and you know, and talk about what's their minimum quality. Okay, you know, so now we want you to not to do a run first, but do a test sample to see what your equipment does. Okay. So the first co-packer we went to, so 
um, we had to pay them like $400 just to do the samples. Okay. And turns out we didn't like it. Oh. Because they said, well, we don't really, we can't really process whole fruit. We have to, we use fruit concentrate. Yeah. And we said, no, sorry. He said, but it'll lower your cost. Right. And we said, no, but the flavor is not what we want. Yeah. Um, fruit so, concentrate is is very different than real fruit, I yes, think. Like yes. a fruit flavoring. I can always tell the difference between cherry flavoring and cherry. Right. Or strawberry flavoring and strawberry. Yeah. I think it's, isn't it? Isn't it more perfumey or? Yeah, it's, 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 it, but it's also chemical. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. we didn't want to, didn't want to do that. So, so you had to find another, another co-packer and we ended up having to hire a consultant to find us a co-packer that would take us. Right. So again, all that investment. So that we ended up with a co-packer. A lot of investment to start in Vermont. a business. No way. So this is, this hot sauce is smoked jalapeno. Mm -hmm. And it's made by the Butterfly Baker in Vermont, who are the co-packer we used, who made these for us. Okay. What's okay. what's happening in Vermont? Uh, well, she used to be in Montpelier. Okay. And now she's in Barrie. Okay. Okay. And I went to college in Vermont, guys. Okay. And so I love not, Vermont. So this is a, a different hot sauce. Woo! I like the, the um the wax the wax seal. Very classy. Very highly crafted. And I've, not, I've not tried this one. Oh. So I have no idea how hot it is. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hot. It's um it's not a slow heat. It's like yeah. a it's like a real quick yeah. burst. Yeah. Sound a little almost like a little burnt. Yeah. It's so, um well, the smoked. Yeah, it's very you smoky. You can definitely taste the smoked. Yeah, very smoky. Rum barrel fermented smoked jalapeno. That is very, um, here, hold it out. Yeah. We'll do a close up so people can see. Um, whew. Yeah, that one's, I think that's the hottest one we've done so far. Yeah. And jalapenos are not nearly as hot as habaneros. Okay. So, Ooh. as a matter of fact, Oh, I'm I'm turning red. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat a so, little from that one. So back to the back, <laughs> so back to the factory thing. It was funny because you know we, we, you get all these samples, and so and my 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 main consultant lives in Cincinnati. So yeah. I drove up to Cincinnati. And we're back in the commercial kitchen. The poor bottles of hot sauce are eating them off the spoon. I don't like this one. I don't like this one. Uh, this one's like we need to tell them to make this one thicker. <laughs> Just, I can see you doing that, Harv. I can but, totally see. It just struck me as funny doing it. Yeah. You know, it's like all those things in life you never think you're going to do. Yeah. And here I am as a consultant eating hot sauce. You know, sampling hot sauces. I won't make this. Oh, for you guys that don't know, Harv and I used to share an office. Yeah. We were professors together, and he was a professor of IT. So he's an ex-programmer. <laughs> oh, that last one. It's making my eyes water a little bit. Give me the sniffles. Yeah, so for you to become an artisanal hot sauce yes. creator is fantastic. <laughs> it's fun. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to mm. entrepreneurial fun. <laughs> yes. So, oh, I need more tea. That okay. one was a little hot. I'm not yeah, sure I was that one. So it was, I think it's the smoke that really... It, it would be okay for barbecue, like, but it's yeah. a bit overwhelming. But the Yeah, the heat really comes through on that. And actually, back to... So, I have to talk about mine again. Yeah, because yeah. Because that's part of what the whole fruit does. Yeah. Is because comparatively, the habaneros in these are much hotter than the jalapeno in here. It's just the way the stuff works. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we did art, product, yeah. presentation, educate, amplify, licensing and contract terms. Mm. It's something I always like to try and talk about because it's like this big secret. It's like nobody teaches about licensing and contracts. It's actually yeah. kind of my soapbox. Yeah. You know, we were professors. I was a professor for 12 years. How no. long were you a professor? 20. 20 years. And I have an MFA in fine art. Nobody told me about art licensing. Right. Until I got out there and I licensed this to a bigger company. And it was like, first we did a letter of intent for a year. Mm -hmm. Then we did a two-year contract. 
And like, I mean, it was like eight pages long. There was all this terminology. There right. was all sorts of things that I didn't know about. So have you found, have you gotten into contracts and licenses and all? And is there anything you can kind of share with us? Yes. So in the, in the, in the packaged food industry, okay. first thing is, uh, whoever you're working with, non-disclosure agreements. Oh, ND... NDAs. NDA. Yes. That's the abbreviation. People will say right. that all the time. Do you have an NDA? Yes. So you have an NDA now? So I have an NDA with my consultants, and I have okay. NDAs with our, our co-packers. Okay. I don't... Not with the stores that I sell to. Oh, of course. Okay. okay. So, yes, you sign an NDA. Okay. And then um, before I give them any secrets, before I give them my recipe, Yeah. you know, and... Um, do you just have the NDA that you give them, or do you ask them to give an NDA to you? Um, actually, because my consult, she's in that business, she has yeah. NDAs. So she sent me her NDA. Okay. okay. And so you have it on hand. So right. And how do you broach that? I know some people are uncomfortable asking for an NDA, but it's very important. It's, it's a very important part of business. Yes. And NDA is flat out standard. You should never be embarrassed about asking for an NDA. You're giving away your secrets. This is my recipe. Yeah. You know. Um, hey, are you, recipes copyrighted? No. Are they patented? No. Are they trademarked? Because they're food. They're you trademarked. They're you, trademarked. You trademark. So Tannenbaum's is, is trademarked. Oh, okay. So we had, to, we had to register, you know, uh, cost $100, send the paperwork in, you get your trademark registered. Right. Okay. So okay. in selling, so now to sell to, uh, to, to the stores, I had to go to Pennsylvania and get a wholesale license. Okay. None of this is hard. All of this is standard. It's just a matter of knowing what you're doing. So okay. back to... So you got a trademark. Right. You got a wholesaler's license. Right. And you can find all this online. Right. You just have to know to look for it. So if you're starting a business and you're starting a food business, then you want to trademark it. If you're starting an art business, you want to copyright your art. And then okay. patent is for more like the way something done is done, yes. process for like engineers. Right. right. And that's thousands of dollars and a that's, lot of research. And that's the, yeah, and a lot of research. Right. And, um, but you, if you're going to do a patent, you really need a patent attorney. Yeah. And I would yeah. even backtrack. When, if you're really going to do this seriously on a commercial level, you need to hire a consultant mm. for those areas because it's just so much. And you can't do it all. Yeah. Um, the the things that my consultants in Cincinnati does, I wouldn't even know to think about doing. Right. Right. Um, so um, the so now and we're gonna we're gonna go up on Amazon. I've got another consultant that's working. Right. I it would take me so long, and I would make so many mistakes, and yeah. I would have no clue what's going on. Whereas it's worth it in the time. Yeah. And and, and, and the effort to just let them yeah. handle all of that. Yeah. And but you know, Har, I, I want to reiterate, yeah. I want to kind of summarize here, okay. because in a way, I think you've really given a great process. And I followed a, a similar one. It's taken me years and years and years. So these I did here in the United States with a local laser cutter, right. went to smaller fairs, went to smaller places, just like you did with, yeah. you know, you tested it, you, you went to smaller places. And then eventually, once you know that this is something people are kind of interested in, then you get a consultant. Right. And then you start to scale up a little bit. Right. And so, yeah. So back to licensing and contract terms. So, so you have we're... an NDA. Right. And so now when, when we start getting, so the stores that we're in now, they're just one-off stores. It's, it's no, uh, I don't have a contract with them. Okay. But the distributor that we're talking to that wants to get us in a grocery store, that's going to be contract work. Yeah. And so at that point, I'll have to get an attorney. I'm really interested when you do that to hear about the terminology and some of the terms because I know in art licensing, I've discovered things like exclusivity. I wonder if that will come up for the supermarkets. Do they ask for that? Like, well, it could. Do you want to be the only one carrying Tannenbaum hot sauce? Um, every you know, everything's negotiable. Yeah, and, and, and it just advice. depends. Everything's negotiable, negotiable, you guys. In life, everything is negotiable. I tell mm. my kids that, yes. and now they negotiate right. with me. Damn it! Well, <laughs> what but, did I do? Okay, so. If to get into a grocery store, so one of the, the mistakes that food entrepreneurs make is we should chase, we need this is a pot, this is another one. This is the red pepper. Okay. 
And actually, we've got another flavor coming out. I should have grabbed it this morning, but ah. and it was and it's a factory sample because we're not we haven't Ooh, bottled it yet. Oh darn it! Yeah, I just forgot to grab it this morning. Cranberry. Cranberry. Ooh, perfect for the holiday yes. season. Yes. So this is one we actually made it initially in the commercial kitchen. We haven't made it in the factory yet. Okay. Okay. So, but um, we're bringing it back out. We're going to have this done in the factory. So I have a factory sample, but we haven't done the run yet. So the factories, you have an NDA with the factories. Is there yes. any other contract terminology that comes up when dealing with factories? Well, we haven't taken any money yet from any investors. Okay. So that's, no, I'm sure there's a, lot, there's a lot of contract work with that. Right. When we work with the supermarkets, it's going to be contract work. Mm -hmm. One of the people say, why don't you go to, you know, the local grocery stores here? Yeah. And the problem is I don't want to because I haven't built the brand up enough that anybody's going to go to the store specifically to that store to buy my product because right. they don't know about it yet. Right. When we get to the point that our, we're recognized enough that somebody will say, do you carry tannin bombs? Then I can go because then I have some negotiating power. Oh, that's smart. That's yeah. smart. And I guess if you were to put it in a smaller store and it didn't move because you don't have visibility, then they end up with extra product and then you get, you know, right. and then, liquidated. You know, and usually, it, it, usually they just let it sit to a sales. Mm. Well, Ooh, this is, that one of those, is so good. And this all is those, very mild. So, and it's got the same habanero as in all the others. This isn't hot at all. I, I don't call that hot at all. It's just um, tangy. I would call that tangy. It's like, it's, there's no heat. I mean, maybe a little heat in the middle of my tongue. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it, he says. <laughs> but you're right. It's not, it's not overly hot. No. But it's, it's there. It's there. It's more towards the back of your tongue. Yeah. Back of my tongue, maybe a little bit of the roof mm -hmm. of my mouth. Really so this, Give me another one. This goes really well with anything you can think of. Oh my god, yeah. So I made ratatouille, which is very bland. I love ratatouille. Put a tablespoon of this in there, mm -hmm. and you won't know this even hot sauce in there, but it'll just it's zucchini. This tastes a little bit like that um steak sauce we showed you upstairs that okay. I put on my tomatoes. Okay. So I get a beautiful heirloom tomato from our CSA, mm -hmm. and I put that steak sauce, and this tastes a lot like that. Yeah, this is mm. this is good stuff. I love this. I'm gonna have to let you try that before you leave, just okay. so you. Oh yeah. So you know. Yeah. So then you you, you know, and, and get an attorney. Oh. This gets this this goes back to cycling back to testing in the beginning. Right. You really have to believe in your product. You really have to test your product and know that it will sell. Yeah. If you go to a like a smaller retailer is just a one-off if it, they'll just let it sit on the shelf till it all sells out and they won't afford it. but if you go to a supermarket and it doesn't sell they'll delist you and oh. then, they, then they will buy then they won't buy again so what is have, delisting it's on their list of like this is not a product that we buy this is like a black flag yes, you've been flagged, flag. you've been flagged oh, no. the product and so well so we're in a supermarket in cincinnati uh -huh. called jungle gyms Jungle Gym sounds yes. like a bounce house. We it have is Monkey Joe's here. Jungle. <laughs> it is. It is a, a really cool grocery store. There's only two of it. Okay. So it's one of those ones where we didn't have to sign a big contract. We can deliver to them. They're not charging us to be on the shelf. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know, which the supermarkets do. Really, and supermarkets it, charge you yes. to be on their shelves. Yes. How does that even work? Think. Of, like they deduct it from your sales, maybe? Yeah. Or they charge you up front? They charge you up front for for shelf space. What? Yes. <laughs> That's seriously. so weird. Well, let I me mean, think about it. Coca-Cola doesn't want any other colas on that shelf. And so they demand all this shelf space. Okay. And they back it up with advertisement on TV. Yeah. You know, if you go into a supermarket, are you going to buy... You know, and you want a cola, are you going to buy Coke because you've seen it on TV? You're going to buy some product where the label isn't as good and yeah. you're not really sure what's in it and you're not really. Right. So those big companies defend their shelf space. Interesting. Right? Interesting. Supermarkets are high volume, low margin businesses. Okay. Okay. So if you think of a car dealer, which is a high margin, low volume, you're only going to sell you know, how many cars a month. Right. Right. 
So you're going to make a lot of money, a relative lot of money on each car. Right. If you're selling, a, if you're in a grocery store where on every bottle of milk you sell, you're only going to make a penny. Right. You need to sell a lot of milk. Right. So for the fat, for the, the grocery store, it comes down to a formula for how much revenue do I get for this amount of shelf space? Oh, okay. So, so I've if, always found the term margins. As I get into entrepreneurship, okay. I think margins needs defined more. Oh. But it's essentially like the profit on a product right. that you're going to make. Right. So I think that's really interesting. They look at the shelf space, right. the amount of shelf space, and right. how much money, the how much profit, profit they can make off that side. Right. So we uh, obviously we have a cost for the the the, the, the yeah. bottles, the labels, the caps, the manufacturer, the ingredients. Right. We have, you know, we, those are all our costs. Yeah. How much to and produce then, it. Right. And then when we sell it to a grocery store, you know, the wholesale price is in. I like too loud. Depending. So different products will have different margins. And because, but food products are interesting because people will look at them and go, if you go to buy a car, you have no clue what it really costs. Right. So it's like whatever their margin is, you know, they'll have like maybe 100% margin on the car. Yeah. You know, but a food product, if you go buy a tomato, it's like if you, you know, if they sell tomatoes for $2 a pound, it's like, eh, you know, I could grow them in the backyard. And yeah, I did, but it's not worth the effort, you know. Yeah. But if it was $20 a pound, you would say that's ridiculous for tomatoes. Right. I'll pay $20 a pound for caviar. But I'm not paying twenty dollars a pound for a plant I can grow in my backyard. Yeah, or maybe so, truffles. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe truffle. So um, in this type of product, I'm a, I can generally get about a thirty. I'm supposed to, about a thirty-five to forty percent markup. Okay. So that's that's my margin. Yeah. But then, so I sell it to the grocery stores for about forty percent more mm -hmm. than it costs me. Yeah. The grocery store then says, well, I'm going to mark it up because I need to make, you know, yeah. what's my cost of shelf space and my cost of employees and my cost of marketing right? and my cost of, of heat, light and, and, and stuff. Yeah. So they're going to mark it up a certain amount. Yeah. I found that the real general rule of thumb on the Internet and with the toy market and with the art market is you find out how much it costs you to make something, how much it costs to produce mm -hmm. it. You multiply by two. If you want to give yourself a little padding, two point like two five, and then that's your wholesale cost. Right. And then the retailer is going to mark it up by two again. Right. And then they're going to round it maybe to like a price point to like nineteen ninety five. Right. Like so, if they're yeah, so that's kind of a, a real general thumb. So we've had some of the people we've dealt with. Um, it's. They've wanted us to say, you know, we want to buy your product, but we want it at a lower cost. Oh, yeah. And you know, they say, can you make it less expensive? So it's like, I can make it less expensive, but that's going to hurt my quality. So that's a decision that I've got to make is whether I want to go that route or whether I want it. So we've had people ask us to private label and we've not, we've refused to do that for the time being. Interesting. So when you go to for again, I won't name any particular grocery store because they yeah. all do it. Well, can you define private label for us? So if you go, if you don't, and you buy the store brand, mm -hmm. okay, I guarantee you that that store did not go and make this from scratch. They went to whoever produces it in their brand name and said, "I will pay you to make it," and you put our label on it. Right. But then they want to sell it for less. They want to make the store brand cheaper than your product right so now you're back to what do you want to do right right you know you know you... the art stores have been doing that they've gotten into private brand labeling yeah. um and it's just interesting because they're transitioning a lot of i heard through the grapevine yeah. that um a lot of like the big box stores are have an actual goal to convert like to like I don't know sixty or seventy five percent all private label their stuff because they make more margins. Right. So the quest. I mean, everybody it wants their piece of the space. pie. It means less space right. though for artisanal crafts 
and inventors and entrepreneurs. Right. Yeah. And so, they did that with distribute. Uh, there's also distributors as well, which I think is interesting is there's distributors who will say to you, hey, we'll distribute your stuff to all these places, but we want to buy it for just a little uh, for less. They want a discount because they're like a third party. Ooh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's not a um, that's not necessarily bad, because if you think about it, a distributor, this is a Chipotle. Okay. Hot sauce. So this is smoked jalapeno. Not hot. No. Not hot. Interesting at all. flavor though. Yeah, good. A lot of the other ones you have of all are all smoked and let's right. see here. Smoked. Um yeah. Oh, so many of these are more savory. Right. So Let's go back and do a pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> because I I think ours are very different. They are All very of these different. Are, I mean, they have different flavors, but it's the same kind of generic type of thing. Yeah. This is unlike any of the other ones. It really is. It's thicker. It's not vinegary. It's not smoked. It's, it's, uh, it's got that very fruit forward. Oh my God. So good. Mm -hmm. I can just sit here and eat this on the spoon. Mm. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, for mm. the distributors, now if, if okay, so if I were to sell to a grocery store, yeah, to not a use and no, I'm good, and not use a distributor, I have to package it all up. I have to ship it. I have to go to twenty different. You know, I might have to go to twenty different stores, right? That may not all be in driving distance of me. Whereas if I, if I work with the distributor and the distributor says, okay, your wholesale price is X, I want a discount of 15% yeah. off of that, then they sell it to the, the store for my wholesale price. I mean, they get that 15%, right. but I just give it to them. I just give it to them and they go to all these stores that I don't even know. Yeah. And they do the warehousing right. and so So it's going to cost money no matter what. Yeah. So anytime you're in this type of business, you're back to, it is a high volume low margin business mm -hmm. you cannot so we we sell these on our website for 1099 okay when i go to a, a, a hot sauce festival i'll sell them for like ten dollars okay. okay but there's a limit but there's a limit because if i were to sell these if i were to say i want twenty dollars a bottle fewer people are going to buy it yeah if you know I, we've talked to some stores and they and they'll say well we you know we're, we don't want it because our markup is going to make it $11 a bottle and it sits on our shelf at 11 it's not going to sell. Mm -hmm. So you're all back to... Yeah. So now eventually I can lower the price, but that means I've got to build my own factory. I've got to control my own supply chain. Right. You know, there's all those things that... Because right now the, the co-packer... Okay. So they order from a they have distributed they have suppliers right you know so most likely they you know, can get if, the bottles they can get the labels or they get better the prices because they're buying in higher volumes mm -hmm. but they also have contacts with the you know yeah. the bottle income the people who make the bottles because they're buying so many of them right that, that i can't do but if i eventually get to the point where i can afford to do it and i can build my own factory that would be then, amazing right then and then I get to the point where I could go to directly to the farmer yeah. to, bu to buy the habaneros and I can process them myself because think of anybody's supply chain. There's a markup every step of the way. Right, right. Yeah. It's all, you know, margins of scale, uh, mm -hmm. economics of scale. The more you can order something, mm -hmm. the more the decrease in cost. Right. Um, and the more you can cut out those middlemen where right. there's markups the more margins you can make but then so, where do you store it and then what happens yeah. and how long can you store it for uh i mean uh, i can't buy fruit and store it for five years no nope. it doesn't nope. work that way so it's back to yeah you know how do you build how do you build a business and that's you know you get into and i think that's back to the contracting and consultant issue yeah which i'm i'm very big on is what is your expertise 
Mm-hmm. This is what I do. I like playing with stuff and I've made these formulas and I've made this hot sauce that people like and want to buy. Yeah. I have no graphic sensibilities. So I I have no talent in food production. I don't know how to run a commercial kitchen. I'm not a food scientist. So I have to have a consultant that has the commercial kitchen with a food scientist in it that can say, wait a minute, you're using you need, you know, 0.2835 grams of this particular type of pectin. Poison sumac. Right. <laughs> or this amount of that to make it consistent. Oh, wait a minute. You need to boil it for exactly, you know, 5.7 minutes at this temperature. Right, right. Right. And then you get into the contracting. I'm not an attorney. Right. I, you know, so I need a consultant that knows. I don't have the time to play with Amazon's chicanery and, and, and manage all of them. Chicanery. That's uh, a new word for me. I like that one. Chicanery. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're saying is focus on your expertise and hire experts to help you in the other areas. It's really great advice and it will save you a lot of time and heartache and hassle and mistakes. And mistakes. I have made those mistakes. And and, and (laughs) it will actually save you money. You're even, you're putting money out for the consultant. It'll save you money in the long run because the time and effort it would take you to learn everything the consultant knows. Oh, yeah. So the, I wish I'd found a consultant earlier because seriously, guys, I have made some mistakes. Like hazard warnings, what are those? You mean right. I got to have hazard warnings on mini brands? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yep. UPC codes, what are those? Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And we don't teach that. Like there's just not enough time. Um. So S, S for success. All right, how do you measure success? I think it's different for every person. So... If you are in it for the money, I don't think you'll ever be happy Mm. Um, because it takes an awful lot of work. And um, if, and again, if you're in it for the money, we can open it. Yeah. If if you're in it for the money, that becomes the goal and there's, you can never make enough. Mm. Um, You have to, it's love what you do. You do it because you want to and enough success that so yeah i want to make money and if well, i don't yeah. make if i don't make any money at all i'm going i'll quit the business because I, it, I can't pay for it all out of pocket right so but how much profit i need i don't need that much i yeah. really you know well you've had a whole nother career yeah this I is what you career. love yeah i think that's really you know i always ask at the end how do you measure success and how do you celebrate it because i know a lot of artists and serial entrepreneurs they don't stop to celebrate their success like we just keep going and going and going so this is going to be hotter okay but this one is ginger which i was kind of interested in and so this is actually a classic caribbean hot sauce okay this is a jerk this is that one up what's that one that one it's a scotch bonnet pepper which is very similar to the habaneros okay but um here there's a there's a close-up that stop moving stop moving This is um, made by by some very nice people in New York. Okay. Oh, that's the most interesting of all the ones besides yours that we tasted. Yep. Ooh, ooh, that's got some heat. That's got some heat. Mm. Oh, my. Oh, (laughs) but the ginger is good. That's like a, um, that's like a Thai hot. Yeah. Like a, like I could see that in a curry or a, a Thai, mm-hmm. that ginger gives it that. Yes. Mm. Or an Indian, Indian uh, dish. Yeah. So it's a Scotch bonnet pepper. Scotch sure. bonnet pepper. Yes. Okay. I don't um, know that one. So success is, are are you are you having fun? Are you making enough to support it? You're making the kind of money you want to make. Right. Um, part of the success for me is. I just love the idea that we named the Tanner bombs, <laughs> you know, that you could walk around and say, oh, you know, that the grandkids go, that's, you know, that's my grandfather. Or I know who that is. Uh, success for me is I want somebody to walk up to somebody I know down the road, say, say, Oh yeah, I know Tanner bombs. It's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with him for years. He's an idiot. Yeah. I guess it got so funny. You're not a jerk. You're funny. You're hilarious. I gotta tell a side story. When we were working together, we always had dress down day on Fridays. And instead of dressing down, Hard would wear a tuxedo. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love it. Somewhere on my computer there, I have a picture of you lounging. I remember taking it. No, you're taking that picture. <laughs> on the desk yes. in front of, in the classroom, yeah. in front of all the computers. It's fantastic because you're in your tuxedo. Yeah. And you're the professor, and you're in front of all these computers. It's it's just it's hilarious. I so thought it was the, hilarious. The trick was, so we had a dress code. Yeah, which some yeah. people liked and some people didn't. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, but I still wanted to poke fun at it. But I didn't want to. I don't. I didn't want to make anybody uncomfortable. Yeah, I didn't want to call anybody a name. I didn't want to do it in a confrontational pattern. Yeah. So the way to do it, which which I just thought was funny. Because I'll just go the other extreme, which is yeah, I'll dress up. I, I wear a tuxedo wearing, with a I wear, bow tie. I wear a tuxedo or a bow tie. You can't yell at me because I'm not wearing jeans, right? <laughs> I'm technically in dress code, but at the same time, you've got the point that I was just kind of like poking. At it. <laughs> but so, it's a great sense of humor, and it it brings attention to things, and I think okay. that's part of the so the you fun. don't you don't know the band aid story? No, so no, the, the band aid story. So yeah, so. Uh, Part of the dress code was if you had a tattoo, you had to cover it with a band-aid. Oh, I remember. Yes. And yeah, so, some of the kids would wrap like um right. like um like a wrap. Right. Like a, a support wrap or whatever right. around their tattoo. So it occurred to me one day that what if you had a tattoo of a band-aid? <laughs> if it was a really good tattoo, to, then would you know it was a band-aid or not? Right. And then I thought, and would you still have to cover it with a band-aid? So then it occurred to me <laughs> that if you can get a tattoo of a Band-Aid, I wonder if you could get a Band-Aid that looks like a tattoo. You can so, get a Band-Aid that looks like bacon. I bought some. <laughs> and I have some. And I found a, I found a, 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 a Band-Aid that's shaped, it has mom written on like a heart with the arrow through it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I bought a bunch of them. And every day would come into work, it would have a Band-Aid on. <laughs> Somewhere different, but it was like a tattoo. Right. Band-aid. Yeah. And we got yelled at because somebody said that they would people would get the mistake and they did that I was making fun of the dress code. <laughs> and it was I was making fun of the dress code. But it wasn't I wasn't calling anybody a name. I wasn't accusing anybody of anything. I wasn't sometimes you'd have to have a little bit of fun. It was just and that's what it was. It was just fun. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, well. So we had the band-aids. <laughs> well, fantastic. Thank you, band-aids and Tuxedos and bow ties. Bow ties. And now a whole new chapter. Tannenbaum's hot sauce. Yes. All right. Give me another taste before we go. Sure. Which one would you like? Oh, I... Oh, the pineapple, I think. No, it's still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, because we did wear the pineapple. Twist my arm. Right. Twist my arm. So, all right. Let me twist it. You know, I again, I know a seven-year-old that uses this for pancake syrup. I know... Your grandkids? No, not my grandkids. This is... Get another spoon. Do you have you to shake it up? Normally you don't, but sometimes if the bottle's been sitting for a while, it gets thick. Yeah, it is a thicker... It still has that little yeah. bit of jelly. Yes, we wanted it... We, we, we wanted it to be a little thicker. You know, I have this... Um, this... Uh, oh, that's better. Balsamic... Um, reduction sauce. It's called like Mama Paye's balsamic vinaigrette reduction. And there's a strawberry version. It's strawberry balsamic. And it's fantastic for cooking with. And this reminds me a little bit of that consistency. Mm, that is good. It's so blueberry. It is. I also know a lot of people that smoke meat with this because smoke? it'll take on almost the barbecue flavor. Oh, interesting. I like it. But it's funny, too, because none of these were, well, some of them were hotter than others, but it's not, they weren't all burning hot. Right. And right. Yet my nose is still starting to run now. <laughs> <laughs> Did we try all of them? We tried, no, we didn't try nearly all of the hot sauce. We tried all of mine. Well, heck yeah. Yeah. I, I think the pineapples, I don't know. The pineapple was really good. Wait, let me try all three of them in a row, and I'll tell you which one's my favorite. Okay, so blueberry. Blueberry was really good. Seriously, not hot. Like, just enough to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm, I love the pineapple of that. It is very pineapple-y. I think it even has a little bit of the um, 
the the um pulp or yeah. it has a little bit of uh, not chewiness but yeah so that was one of the texture as i said the with the um all right know, with, and with then the this, pepper, is the this is the red pepper red pepper okay and so yeah with the that first co-packer they couldn't grind whole fruit they wanted to use the um uh concentrate right right i like that you ground the whole fruit mm -hmm. because it gives it more body yep i i really would do that on tomatoes on an heirloom tomato the pineapple or the, or the red pepper the red pepper this is so much like the steak sauce that i love on my on my heirloom tomatoes this was so much fun of course i always love talking to you anyway mm -hmm. but uh, the the idea of sitting in front of the camera and eating hot sauce off a spoon <laughs> just tickles my sense of humor well, you know, I always begged for uh, a, um, a studio okay. at the school. I always wanted them to build yes. a green screen and a podcasting studio. And so I built it here. I mean, it's a little bit more casual. We're in my, um, this is an in-law suite, guys. Um, this is in my basement and this is the kitchen and I've converted it into a craft studio. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a little jerry-rigged here and there, but we get it done. We get her done. Get her done. Yeah, okay, so having done the strawberry after the, all of them at the end, the strawberry is a lot less apparent, and I still really like it. Um, I think my favorite is the pineapple and this one. I think I would use that on tomato, and I would use that to cook with. But I love all four of them. The cranberry, you're leaving me I wish all four, I right? Brought, yeah, I'm leaving you all four. <laughs> yeah, I would have brought. I, I the cranberry is really great. My favorite is the apricot, which we still don't make. I've made a mango, which we're not making yet um we wanted to so you have three more coming cranberry apricot the cranberry's coming out okay the apricot i don't know when it's going to come out okay tamarind i don't know when it's going to come out tamarind that's like the yellow herb that's it's a lot really of it's a lot of indian food is right. tamarind it's a sweet citric spice sweet we sour. had a tamarind tea upstairs we could have tried mm -hmm. but oh. i find tamarind really strong i think though mm -hmm. there's some natural Properties for anti-inflation, yeah. uh, inflation, inflammatory, inflammatory. The habaneros are actually the habaneros are actually anti-inflammatory. Mm. Well, it's fantastic. Well, thank you. Hey, where can we get Tannenbaum's hot sauce? I'm taking uh, for me. These are mine, guys. But uh, where can we okay. get them? Uh, Shady Maple. Sh Shady Maple on the other side of Ephrata um we're in pa we're in, in pennsylvania um leg up farmers market near york in pennsylvania mm -hmm. um but you can also get us online cannonbombfoods.com cannonbombfoods.com yes like tannenbaum oh tannenbaum yes. oh tannenbaum blah 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 mm -hmm. blah 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 that's tannenbombfoods.com um we are working on getting up on amazon that may be in another month or so mm -hmm. um but yeah we're we're working at getting it out there working it working yep. it well thank you so much cheers to you hard cheers thank you for thank inviting you. me it's always oh, thank you to for talk coming. To you. oh great it's excuse <laughs> come to my house let's drink hot sauce and be on the podcast we get I, just the idea of it is just cracks me up just yeah i'm gonna sit there and eat hot sauce <laughs> i love it i love it yeah. well thank you so thank much you. and uh i'll see you guys on the next episode go get some of this hot sauce it's so super good thank you have fun everybody <laughs> <laughs>